A thousand injuries of rarity I had bore as best I could, but when she ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. I can't tell you how grateful I am that you called me Applejack. I don't even think Upper Crust herself has ever tasted real apple giotto. Yeah, well, I knew that only some pony with your refined taste would appreciate it, Rarity. The two ponies headed down the flight of stairs and deeper into the apple cellar vaults. Torches, lit earlier, shined brightly in the darkness to illuminate their path. Their heat masked the cold from the snow just above. Rarity cast her eyes up sadly, the damp was already getting to her mane, causing it to droop slightly. Oh, well, a small sacrifice for a fine drink as Apple Diotto. When Applejack had told her, she'd rushed over as quickly as she could. For heaven's sake, she hadn't even brought a hat, a decision that was haunting her now more. Applejack, would you mind terribly if I run back to the boutique? I mean... Shoot, Rare. I'd forgotten. Sure, go ahead and run off. Besides, I should really have someone else taste it first, just to make sure. I wouldn't want you to get all excited unless it was real Apple Tolado. Maybe Rainbow Dash. She knows her ciders pretty well. Rarity raised her nose. <laughs> Rainbow Dash couldn't tell Malot from a bottle of Main Streetner. Let's continue. Whatever you say, Rarity. They continued on a while, their only company the clopping of their hooves echoing on the walls. They passed a relatively new section of wall, but Rarity paid no mind to it. Mason work had never impressed her. Rarity again broke the silence. Applejack, I don't mean to pry. By all means, pry away. The orange earth pony replied, not bothering to stop or turn her head. Well, how do you know it's an apple tiato? It's extremely rare, you know. You mentioned. From what I understand, Granny Smith acquired it a few years ago and just forgot about it. Ah, Granny Smith, I am sorry I missed the funeral. Think nothing of it. I know how busy you can be, Ponyville's premier seamstress and all. Be that as it may, I should have at least... Anyway, I read about the cast in her will. I figured you and I could share a glass and decide what to do with the rest. Oh. Rarity's head spun at the possibilities. With the cast of real Apple Tiato, she could really secure a spot with Canterlot's elite. She'd be literally the toast of the town. Immediately, she began formulating exactly how drunk she would have to get the young farmer to purchase the entire cast. Hopefully not too drunk. Apple Tiato was dreadfully scarce. She hadn't been thinking long when Applejack suddenly stopped. She looked past her and saw an alcove built into the wall. It went deep into the darkness to see very far inside. If there was a barrel of anything in there, she would have to be closer to inspect it. Just then there. Applejack motioned her head into the alcove. Well, all right then. Let's have a look. Shaking off the uneasiness, Rarity walked past Applejack and into the alcove, lighting her horn to light the way. Once in the alcove, she narrowed her eyes in confusion. The alcove was just deep enough for her to get all the way in. The ceiling was just high enough that it didn't touch her mane. There was no cast of anything here, just a bare wall. The light of her horn glinted off something. Are those chains? Yes. Yes, they are. Applejack's voice was right behind her. The alabaster unicorn spun just in time to see the back hoof of the element of honesty bucking straight for her forehead. <coughs> A low scraping noise slowly seeped its way into her mind. The darkness gave way to colors, first blurred, then crystal clear. A dull pain thudded in her forehead, and she reached up, feeling the jagged edge of her broken horn. My... my horn... She muttered groggily. Yes, yeah, sorry about that, but I couldn't have you magic in your way out then, could I? As her vision cleared, Rarity focused on Applejack. 
The scraping sound she had heard had been the scrape of a trowel Applejack had been using to lay mortar and bricks along the alcove entrance. The young farmer was working hard, her coat already slick with sweat. The new wall was four stacks high, and soon the fifth would be done. Applejack, what are you doing? You had a bit too much to drink. It was a little more kick than you were expecting, I imagine. I've been trying to talk you into leaving, but you'll have none of it. So, I'll just leave you here. But I don't want to stay here. Rarity was still quite groggy and not sure what was going on. Here, I'll leave. The unicorn stood on wobbly legs and tried to move past the wall, but found herself unable to continue. Something was holding her back. She turned her head slowly and found chains tied around her midsection. The chains were attached to the wall. The wheels began to turn more quickly in Rarity's head, and she began to hyperventilate. Everything suddenly became shockingly clear, as did the sharp pain where her horn was supposed to be. There you go. I was wondering how long it was going to take you to catch on. But, but, Applejack, why? Why? For just a moment, she turned from her work and gazed coldly into Rarity's eyes. The trowel moved to the corner of her mouth. I've had to put up with your little jabs and insults for years, Rarity. Insults about my upbringing, my lifestyle, even about my family. Playful jets and nothing more. Hardly a reason to warm me up in the cider cellar. But Celestia, sick Applejack, let me loose! Maybe they were all playful just to you, but what you did to Big Macintosh was anything but playful. Rarity's mouth dropped. He... he told you? Not directly, no. Applejack returned to her work, now laying the sixth layer. But he left it all in his note. Note? His suicide note. The stunned silence that followed lasted until Applejack began work on the seventh layer. She made sure to leave a single brick out of place. When did it happen? Rarity's voice was a whisper. Three days ago. It's a miracle that the rafters in the barn didn't break from his giant mass hanging from them. Applejack, why didn't you tell any pony? The orange earth pony snorted. Air out our dirty laundry to the masses? <laughs> no thank you. This is a family matter. What, what did he say happened? He pretty much laid everything out. Didn't leave much room for doubt. After I read it, I knew what had to be done. For a second time, Applejack paused. Her eyebrows raised in genuine interest. Wow, Rarity. Why did you do it? It wasn't anything. Rarity casted her eyes down. He was drunk. I was drunk. Is that what you told him? That you would have to be drunk to be with some pony like him? No, well, not in those exact words. Applejack shook her head and resumed her work. The seventh layer was soon complete. No pony can hear you, so save your breath. Snow's too deep. By the time winter wrap-up rolls around, you probably won't even have enough strength to even scream. This isn't fair, Applejack! How was I supposed to know we'd take it so badly? We just lost Granny Smith! We don't have a lot of family to begin with, and you... You took advantage of him, Rarity! You took advantage of him at his lowest! I know you're grief-stricken, dear, but Macintosh is hardly blameless in all this. Big Macintosh fell for you! You... you hussy! She snorted in anger. He thought he had finally found some pony who cared. Some pony who could take care of him in his time of need. And you just shut him down completely. Didn't even let him down easy, either. <sighs> some element of generosity you are. We all have moments of weakness. It was Macintosh's own fault that he fell for me. Vain till the end. <laughs> Figures. Shaking her head sadly, 
Applejack resumed working. How do you plan on explaining this to the others? To Sweetie Belle? Rarity did her best to keep the panic out of her voice. She was failing miserably. Don't you worry your pretty little head about that. Wrote a nice long letter explaining how you and Macintosh eloped and set out to find your new home. After that, everyone will just assume that you both are too happy to even bother with your friends back home. As for Sweetie Belle, I'm sure she'll be fine. Rarity sniffed indignantly, noting that only two layers of bricks remained. Her time was running out. All right, Applejack, this has gone on far enough. Your attempts at humor are quite morbid, I'd have to admit. Come, let us retire to the farmhouse and get this whole business settled like civilized pony. Oh, I don't know, Rarity. Applejack replied, starting work on the final lair. I think we're settling just fine right here. The coolness and certainty in Applejack's voice finally caused Rarity's mind to snap completely. She lunged at the wall and scraped at it as a rat would scratch at a trap. For the love of Celestia, Applejack! Yes, for the love of Celestia. Applejack returned, placing the last brick on the top row. And for the love of family. The wall was completed. All that remained was the final brick, and the alcove would be sealed for all time. Applejack peered into the hole, into the darkness. Rarity? The only response was the clopping of hooves, as though they were dancing. Shaking her head, the earth pony laid the mortar and placed the final stone into its place. Silence. Applejack breathed deep and reached a hoof up. Using her hat, she wiped her brow free from sweat and rehid the remaining mortar and bricks. She reached down and grabbed the broken stub that had been the unicorn's horn in her mouth. She reached up as high as she could and placed it on a little outcropping of brick. It was the only marker Rarity would have. The only one she deserved. Her need for vengeance sated, Applejack headed back upstairs, dousing the torches as she went. No pony ever came down this steep. No pony would ever know. She glanced sideways at the newly constructed walls, the one that Rarity had passed without a second thought. Hanging from it was a harness she knew well. Rest easy, brother. She whispered. Without another word, she resumed the trek back up into the unforgiving cold of winter. For half a century, no pony has disturbed her. In pace requiescat.